Hey guys, welcome to class number three. Uh, last class we talked about Newton's laws in general and then we went more specifically about the law of inertia. Today we're going to be talking most specifically about Newton's second law, the relationship between force and mass and acceleration. And I thought that we might just start by defining these three terms. What is a force? A force is a push or pull on an object. So anything that pushes or pulls an object, it could be gravity, which needs no tether, or it could be something like a string or my hands or, or anything like that. Those things are all forces. Next, what is mass? Mass is the amount of stuff something has or something is made up of. The more stuff something has, the more massive it ends up being. Lastly, we have acceleration. Acceleration, unlike when we talk about it in your car, when you say you accelerate, it means that you're speeding up perhaps from a red light or a stop sign or something like that. In physics, when we say acceleration, what we mean is a change in speed. Or speed is a bad term. Really, it's a change in velocity. And we haven't quite differentiated those two terms yet, but we will. We'll get there. For now, let's just say that force is a push or pull on an object. Uh, mass is the actual amount of stuff that that object is made up of. And acceleration is a change in the velocity. And these three things have an effect on each other. Last time we talked about inertia and the laziness of objects and the fact that they need an external force in order to change their motion. That change in motion is acceleration. Right? A speed up or a slow down is a change in motion. Even if something is stopped, it has zero velocity, it needs some force to start it moving. So that's what uh, the, the relationship is here. And when we think about this, think about pushing either a semi-truck or something like a skateboard, where we have two different sized masses. Right? If we have something that has a big mass, like a semi-truck, and something that has just a tiny mass, like a skateboard, and we wanted to push them to 10 miles an hour. How much force would it require for the big mass versus the small mass? Really, that's what Newton's second law is talking about. It's talking about the ratio of mass and force to acceleration. And the equation ends up being pretty simple. The proportion is very simple. Here we have a large mass, like I said, something like a semi-truck, but because I can't draw semi-trucks, here's a moving van instead. And down here we have something very small, like a skateboard. And we want them to accelerate at the same rate. Imagine these two are in a race, and they, we want to speed them up at the same rate. To speed up a semi-truck, it takes a lot of force. As the mass goes up, to keep the acceleration the same, so too must the force increase. In fact, they increase and decrease directly. Mass goes up, force goes up. Mass goes down, force goes down. So to keep the same acceleration, we have a large force. It can accelerate a large mass. Or if the acceleration is the same, then we have a small force to accelerate a small mass. Here is the proportional difference between force and mass. Now, if we are applying some standard force and this force is staying the same, then as mass goes up, acceleration goes down. Force is the same, mass is really big, acceleration is very small. Equal force, small mass, big acceleration. I hope that this proportionality is a new idea, but if you have questions, you can ask me next class. I will do an example where we actually use numbers.
I want to accelerate a truck to an empty moving truck to 10 meters per second squared. So my acceleration is 10 meters per second squared, which is just, it increases by 10 meters a second each second. Oh, that's not quite on this guy. Acceleration is 10 meters per second each second. And like every good physics problem, I'm going to draw a quick picture. There's my semi truck. We want it to be going at 10 meters per second squared, or increasing its speed by 10 meters each second. And I apply some standard force. Let's say I apply 1,000 newtons. Newtons is just the measurement of force that we use. Um, it's, it's imagine it as uh, the amount of pushing or pulling something has, the amount of force itself. I can now use these two pieces of, inf of information to solve for the mass. Um, the mass I don't know, so I'm going to put a question mark. And we know that this is being pushed by 1,000 newtons. What is the mass of the truck? Well, I can plug it into the equation that we just found out. Acceleration equals force over mass. Our acceleration is 10 meters per second squared over 1,000 newtons is the mass. I can multiply m by both sides and end up with 10 meters per second squared times m equals 1,000 newtons. Oops. And I divide both sides by 10, and I end up with a mass of 100 kilograms. A fairly light moving truck, if you ask me. Now, what if I were to fill this moving truck with all of my stuff, right? And I have a lot of stuff. Let's say that I have 900 kilograms worth of stuff. How would I find out how quickly I could accelerate this truck given the same amount of force? Well, we can use the same equation, except change our variables. So I've added 900 kilograms, and I know that my force will stay the same, giving me a mass of 1,000. A force of 1,000. And I don't know the acceleration. I can solve it using the same process, where I don't know this and I know these two, so I can just simply plug them in. A equals F over M. A equals 1,000 newtons over 1,000 kilograms. And I end up only accelerating at one meter per second each second, 10 times more slowly. So we can see that the heavier an object is, the more force that it's required to actually get that object going. And this even relates back to inertia. Right? We know that a heavier object is more difficult to get started moving. Same is true. And this is just re-emphasizing that. That's Newton's second law. We're going to be doing some of these equations in class next time. So if you think you need some practice, think about this. Maybe you rewatch this video, and we'll come back to it in class. See you soon.